So Parliament has been suspended. Just a couple of days after Justin Trudeau embarked upon a massive power grab invoking the Emergency Measures Act for the first time in Canadian history, giving him and his government unprecedented power, Parliament gets shut down. Right now, it's uh, shortly after 11 o'clock. This is about the time of day when members of Parliament are, start questioning the government. This is about the time when question period starts on a Friday. And of course, this week, opposition MPs would be asking the government questions about the legitimacy of the use of the Emergency Measures Act. Uh, in order for that act to be justified, very high legal thresholds have to be met. And we would be grilling the Prime Minister and his ministers responsible for invoking that act literally as we speak. But instead, we're actually not allowed in the chamber. The order went out earlier today saying that the House of Commons was having today's session cancelled. Uh, this is unbelievable. At the very moment when Trudeau and his government is grabbing extraordinary power, the power to freeze someone's bank account, the uh, power to stop people from moving around in downtown Ottawa, the ability to, uh, for the police to compel other people to assist them in dealing with the protest. These are extraordinary powers that have never been granted before in Canadian history under this piece of legislation. And instead of being able to, 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 to grill the government, to ask questions, to expose the hypocrisy of Trudeau and his cabinet, the House of Commons sitting has been suspended. This is unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a very difficult two years. And this isn't the first time that Trudeau has tried to give himself powers unchecked by Canada's parliamentary democracy. Remember in the first few days of the COVID-19 pandemic, in, in those early days when, when, uh, when a lot was unknown about the virus, Justin Trudeau's first attempt at emergency legislation two years ago was to completely sideline parliament. He tried to give himself, give himself the power to tax and spend without any kind of parliamentary oversight. That was his instinct. His instincts during an emergency, during a health emergency, during a pandemic, was to take away the check on his power, was to try to uh, remove parliamentary oversight from the day-to-day -day operations of his government. That is the type of person that Justin Trudeau is. And now, this week, he invokes the Emergency Measures Act. And you're going to see a lot of people in the government try to justify this by talking about restoring law and order, about safety. But let's keep in mind that two, uh, one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest justifications for using the Emergency Measures Act was to free up, in, in the government's own words, to, to open up vital transportation links. Well, there's a couple things to remember. The blockades on the Ambassador Bridge, which, by the way, conservatives were very clear in condemning. We believe that people have the right to protest peacefully, but that they don't have the right to impinge on other people's freedom. And when uh, it was clear that vital supply chains were being affected, uh, we were extremely clear in our desire to see those vital transportation routes open. But remember in 2020, when anti-energy protesters were blocking rail lines in central Canada because of a natural resource project several provinces away in British Columbia, Trudeau did nothing to clear the rail lines then. In fact, not only did he do nothing to clear the blockades, he actually sent a government minister to negotiate with the protesters. They were setting things on fire on railway tracks. Trudeau didn't see the need for emergency measures then. He didn't talk about freezing anyone's bank accounts when it was anti-energy protesters, crippling the Canadian economy. That lasted four weeks. But the difference in 2020 to this protest is that Justin Trudeau agreed with the anti-energy protesters back in 2020. 20. So he allowed them to continue. Now in 2022, when people are protesting against his mandates, his restrictions, well, now he's bringing down the heavy sledgehammer of the Emergency Measures Act. And let's keep in mind, that's what this protest was all about. As jurisdictions within Canada and around the world were easing restrictions, were allowing people to go back to normal, lifting mandates, Trudeau brought in a new mandate a new vaccine mandate on 
truckers. Now, many people have been affected by unjust vaccine mandates. I know people who have lost their job because they wanted to make their own health care choice. And conservatives have always been clear that we believe in vaccines. We believe that vaccines are the best way to fight the pandemic. But we also respect individual liberty and, and, and individual choice. And we don't believe that anybody should be forced between keeping their job and making a health care decision that they may not be comfortable with, that the government shouldn't have that kind of power. You don't want to live in a country where the government can compel you to do those kinds of things. And that's the principle that conservatives stood on, individual liberty, individual choice. So at the very moment when governments here in Canada, several provinces, jurisdictions around the world were lifting restrictions, Trudeau brings in a new one and people started protesting. And what did Justin Trudeau do then? A lot of talk throughout his career in the early days when he was in opposition, talking about the need to have dialogue with people who are upset, to uh, hear both sides, to not demonize people for having a different point of view. What did he do this time? He insulted them. He started uh, dehumanizing them, referring to people who have, va who have questions about making a healthcare decision, started calling them racist, misogynist. Keep in mind, this is the guy who did blackface so often that he can't remember how many times he did it. This is the guy who fired his attorney general because she, a strong woman, wouldn't go along with his corruption, wouldn't go along with his attempts to interfere in a criminal court case. And he has the gall, he has the audacity to call other people misogynist, to call other people racist. So instead of trying to de-escalate the tensions and hear the protesters, he added fuel to the fire and he inflamed the rhetoric, started calling them the fringe minority. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been walking throughout Ottawa over the past few weeks. I've met people who are double vaxxed, triple vaxxed. They're not protesting against uh, uh, legitimate measures to keep people safe. They're protesting against government overreach. And how does Trudeau respond to protests against his overreach? By embarking upon another overreach, a massive power grab, giving himself unprecedented powers. And it's so frustrating watching many in the corporate media, the legacy media, try to cover for, uh, for Trudeau on this. The, the state broadcaster, the CBC, gets $1.3 billion of tax money uh, to operate. And their news division is working overtime to try to discredit those protesting and to try to justify and cover for Trudeau's use of the Emergency Measures Act. They even had one of their anchors, one of their uh, on-air hosts, speculate that maybe the Russians were behind this protest, uh, saying that the word freedom was somehow linked to the far right, that those who want personal freedom and individual liberty, uh, anybody advocating for that must be a member of a fringe group. This is the state broadcaster at work here in Canada. Uh, even going so far as justifying the use of the Emergency Measures Act by saying that it's not affecting civil liberties. Well, when the government has the power to freeze your bank account without due process, that sounds like an infringement on civil liberties to me. When the police can force a tow truck driver into action, compel him, basically conscript him into assisting the police, that certainly sounds like an infringement on civil liberties to me as well. And now at the very moment when parliament should be debating the use of the Emergency Measures Act, we should be holding the government to account, asking the tough questions, parliament gets canceled. We've heard expert testimony this week in committees, House of Commons committees doing very important work, hearing from the head of intelligence agencies saying that there is no evidence that, uh, that, that that these measures were necessary, that there's no evidence that the government could provide to justify the use of extraordinary power to freeze bank accounts. Now, last night in British Columbia, there was a, a horrific attack on the Coastal Gas Link project. Earlier reports indicate that several workers were injured. Uh, even a police officer may have been injured by the attack. Reports are still coming in. It's still early details. But it seems clear that violent armed thugs smashed equipment and threatened people's personal safety. Is the media going to cover that? Is the corporate media here in Canada going to talk about the, the radical left-wing activists, the, the far left groups who are willing to do violence to achieve their aims? 
Well, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very difficult time for many, many Canadians. Uh, we've been through two years of health, uh, of a health emergency, people legitimately concerned about their own health and the health of their friends and loved ones, legitimately worried about the effects of COVID-19 on themselves and their family. But they've also been suffering through extraordinary government restrictions, extraordinary limitations on our individual freedom and our ability to make our own decisions, our ability to keep small businesses open, for example. Uh, uh, we've had situations where the government's told people who they can have in their house. And now after two years, as we see hope on the horizon in so many other countries, and indeed in many jurisdictions here in Canada, Trudeau brings in new ones. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's just complete hypocrisy. When you look at the history that Justin Trudeau has, uh, you look at his own personal history in dealing with these types of protests, it's very clear that they're punishing one group of protesters solely because they don't agree with them. The Trudeau Liberals don't agree with them. When they agree with the aims of the protesters, heck, uh, they'll let them happen for weeks, send a government minister to negotiate a settlement even. It's unbelievable. Conservatives are going to keep fighting against this abuse of power by Justin Trudeau. The expectation is there's going to be a vote next week. Hopefully Parliament will have an opportunity to debate what Justin Trudeau has done. I'm hopeful that Parliament will sit sometime this weekend. But one thing's for sure, Justin Trudeau can no longer claim to, 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 to in any way be a consistent Prime Minister, to, to, to in any way to have any kind of integrity in terms of his reaction, his approach to dealing with these types of things. So I'm happy to take some of your questions. I know there's a lot, uh, a lot going on. Um, is this a, someone just asked, is this a vote of confidence? Yes. It, well, I, that's up to Justin Trudeau, I suppose. I, I, I hope liberals, I hope backbench liberal MPs really think about this, really think about what they're about to vote on. Do they want to give Justin Trudeau the kind of power that he's grabbing for himself? And keep in mind, you know, in the debates in the, in the past couple of days, a lot of liberals are talking about how, hey, don't worry, don't worry. We've put special measures in to make sure that this is all okay with the Charter of Rights, with uh, that, that, that it'll be that, that that it'll all be fine with uh, with normal limitations on government powers, except for those very small prescribed areas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the same prime minister. Justin Trudeau is the same guy who used his power to attempt to try to interfere in a criminal court case, tried to pressure his attorney general to improperly intervene intervene in an ongoing criminal court case, and he's asking us to trust him. I don't think so. You'll pardon me if I don't want to just take Justin Trudeau's word for it. And just because the state broadcaster like the CBC is doing their best to try to uh, 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 calm people's fears that Trudeau might abuse his power, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to take it from, from him just on his word alone. You know, this is the exact same playbook that dictatorial governments in Eastern Europe used to use all the time. Everything that they did to take away people's freedom was always justified for things like public safety and to keep order and to keep peace. Remember the Berlin Wall, the, the excuse for the Berlin Wall was to keep foreign enemies out. It, it was never presented to the people of East Berlin that it was going to keep them trapped inside. The, the way the, the state dehumanizes and completely discredits anybody who stands up against the abuse of power. It's very, very eerily similar to what Justin Trudeau's doing today. And it's, it's amazing to watch some of the, some of the media focus on this. Uh, every day when I cross Wellington Street, I'm greeted by people who are, who, who are gathered there. Sometimes they're very clearly protesters. Sometimes they're people just walking by. But I got asked by a Liberal Member of Parliament why I waved at some of the protesters. Well, I waved because they waved at me. I'm very Canadian. When someone's polite to me, I'll be polite back. But the question was so telling. The question was, how could you even be friendly? How could you even treat the protesters with basic levels of decency and politeness? That was the undertone of the question from the Liberal Member of Parliament, that somehow by having that point of view, by expressing that point of view, by, by exercising their people's right to, to protest and to, to advocate for the things they believe in, even just waving back at someone, just greeting that person in a typically Canadian friendly way, that that was somehow 
improper. And that's what I mean by the, the far left, the radical lefties in the Liberal caucus and, and many in the corporate media here in Canada. That's what I mean when I talk about their attempts to dehumanize and delegitimize many of the people who are uh, pro protesting. Another question came through, how can they win in a minority? This is what people in Saskatchewan, British Columbia, Ontario, anywhere where there are, uh, where the NDP have held seats in the past, anywhere where, where the NDP have seats right now, the NDP are going along with this. Jagmeet Singh and his caucus have decided to support Justin Trudeau's use of the Emergency Measures Act. This is unprecedented for the NDP. The NDP uh, have at least had a consistent approach to putting limits on government overreach as it relates to people protesting. Uh, they voted against the, the use of the War Measures Act uh, in, under the previous Trudeau government. But because it fits in with their political ideology today, they are willing to sacrifice fundamental limits, important limits on government power, just because they too disagree with the goals of the protesters. And again, the NDP back in 2020, when, uh, when rail lines were being blockaded, they had no problem with that. They, they weren't clamoring for the Emergency Measures Act then. It's another example of NDP hypocrisy on this. I wanna specifically thank my own premier, uh, Scott Moe, in Saskatchewan, he has been outspoken denouncing the use of the Emergency Measures Act. Uh, I understand Premier Jason Kenney has as well. I hope more and more premiers start to push back uh, against this abuse of power. You don't want to live in a country, whatever your opinion on the protests are, and, I, and I, 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 I get it. There are a lot of deeply held views on many different sides of, uh, of the debate, both around the restrictions around COVID and the timing of lifting them. But whatever your opinion may be, you don't want to live in a country where the prime minister of the day just gets to decide which protests to crack down on, which protests to grant himself unprecedented power, and which ones he's just going to leave go because he happens to agree with them. You don't want to live in a country where the prime minister gets to make those decisions just because of his own personal views. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. The, the, there are arrests being made in Ottawa today based on existing laws. The, Ambassador Bridge was cleared out based on existing laws and existing law enforcement tools. There's no need for the Emergency Measures Act. There's, there's no extra level of legal authority that police need in order to uphold the existing laws. What they have done is they've used the Emergency Measures Act to grant the government extraordinary powers to freeze bank accounts, to compel people into assisting the police. And none of that was necessary to keep our vital transportation routes open. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sad to report here on, uh, on, on this Friday, a day that the House of Commons should have been sitting right about now, question period would be about halfway through. We, have ha we would have had an opportunity to question the minister responsible for this, to question the prime minister. Instead, the House of Commons has been shut down just two days after Trudeau declared the Emergency Measures Act, giving himself this unprecedented power, Parliament is shut down at the very time that we should be providing that oversight and holding the government to account. So if you have the opportunity, find out the, find out the phone number for your local member of parliament. If you've got a liberal or an NDP member of parliament, call them and let them know. We've got, uh, we've got a couple more questions here. I'm just going through. One question is when can a vote happen? Right now the vote is scheduled for Monday night. We were supposed to have several days of debate starting with yesterday and then of course uh, today and into the weekend. It's unclear as to whether or not Parliament will reopen this weekend to allow members of Parliament to debate. So there is a possibility of a scenario where there will be a vote on Monday night without the time required for even debating the use of this legislation. We're not sure about that. We're hopeful, uh, we should be finding out more details. It's, it's so, so basically stay tuned. Monday is the vote. Take the time this weekend Call your member of parliament. If you've got a liberal or an NDP member of parliament, call them and let them know how upset you are. Even if you disagree with the protests, even if you disagree with the tactics that they've used, even if you are concerned about uh, the, 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 the if, even if, if you live in Ottawa and you've been negatively affected by the protests, 
You don't want to live in a country where Justin Trudeau has that kind of personal power. So please take the time to contact your member of parliament and let them know. Um, another question, is it normal to suspend parliament in a national emergency? Parliament sat during World War II. Parliament sat during the FLQ crisis. Parliament has sat through many, many different types of emergencies. Parliament has sat for the last three weeks during the protests. Parliament has sat. I was speaker the day after the, the Parliament Hill shooting. The House of Commons sat. We suspended for one day only the day of the attack itself, but we reopened the next day to show that our Parliament will always function, even during times of difficulty. So it's not normal to suspend Parliament. We'll see what happens for the rest of the weekend. Um, so I was asked a question by Elizabeth May yesterday about the protest. Now, Elizabeth May was arrested. She, she, was the former, she is the former leader of the Green Party. She was arrested for participating in a blockade. Imagine if the government had the power to freeze her bank account or freeze the bank accounts of anybody donating to the Green Party. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the government without any kind of court order, without any kind of warrant, without any kind of judicial oversight, has now the power to freeze bank accounts. And they've made it retroactive. They've made it retroactive. So if you donated two or three weeks ago when the convoy was just about driving to Ottawa and making their views known, if you are at risk for something that you did three weeks ago, before these emergency measures were put in place, before the other types of activities that you may now disagree with happen, you can be held accountable. You can have your bank account frozen for something that you did weeks ago. The retroactive nature of this act is unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have to hop off here for now. I just wanted to go over those, those points. A lot of people are very frustrated. I've had so many emails and phone calls, people saying, what can we do to help? How can this happen in Canada? How can this happen in, in, in what is supposed to be a strong, vibrant democracy? Well, I can only tell you that conservatives are doing everything we can to stand up for your individual liberty, for your fundamental rights, and for the natural limits on government power. We're going to keep up the fight, but please take the time this weekend. Let your views known. Reach out to NDP and Liberal members of Parliament and let them know that you're upset, that you're not happy, and tell them that you will remember this at the next election. We, ha we cannot reward parties that abuse their power like this. Justin Trudeau has to be taught a lesson. Remember this day. Remember this week. As we go forward, as, as this minority parliament continues, we don't know when the next election will be. It could happen any time. Just make sure you remember this. Tell your friends and your family to remember this. This cannot be allowed to happen in a democracy. Other countries around the world are taking notice of this. Other countries with terrible human rights records are now attacking Canada because Justin Trudeau has decided to do this without any justification, without meeting the legal threshold for the use of this Emergency Measures Act. It's unbelievable. So we're gonna keep fighting. Take the time to contact those Liberal and NDP members of, par members of Parliament. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll, I'll be providing updates throughout the weekend as we, uh, as we get a little bit more information about the vote on Monday and how the debate in the House of Commons will go. Thanks very much.